Hello guys, thanks for tuning in again. Um, back again with um, the 132nd scale HK models Lancaster and this time we're back on the cockpit. Um, <clears throat> as some of you will be aware, I, I wasn't too happy about the uh, the standard cockpit floor so I made my own here and I've added some detail to it, some, some hosing, some cabling and stuff and basically completely rebuilt the seat to the, the shape I think it should be. Um, now looking at the control column and cut the hole in the floor to fit the control column um, and it just doesn't look right and I'm looking through my references and, and, and everything and I think basically what HK have done is made the control column about two millimeters too short but I think it's also slightly too wide and slightly too fat so it kind of looks stubby so it needs to be slimmed down and narrowed down a bit so I may as well just um, scratch build it and the other thing I've noticed this this bit on the side here um, this bit here, I get the camera to focus, this here, that is actually a feature that I, I can only see on the Mark 7 and the Mark 10, and that was the extension shaft where they could come off and put the dual controls in. So um, all the pictures I found of the 1 and the 3 don't actually have that on, so that can go which makes slimming it all down a lot easier as well. And also if you are building this kit out of the box um, this triangular frame here, the idea of that frame is to to stop the control column from being pulled back too far. So there should be another frame in front of it. But even if you're building the kit out of the box, that needs to go further forward. So I would suggest, you know, cutting the pins off of this part and uh, and, and mounting it further forward because you're not going to see it underneath. It'll be hidden under the seat anyway. So, um, but it, yeah, it should be further forward so you can see it. Um, the other thing that's missing is on the base of the control column there is like a leather gaiter which goes into a square hole much like a gear, a gear stick on your car um, that's slightly larger than the control column base so what I intend to do is get a piece of plastic car two millimeters thick mount it on that and then I'll carve it away to look like a sort of leather gaiter around the bottom of it um, and then having said that, I'm probably going to scratch build it anyway. Uh, and the other thing is, if you want to get really picky, this panel here, on the detail, you can see this part here, this oval panel. That is actually um, an access panel. It should be higher up. And that there should be right on the top corner. So if you want to get really picky, then uh, then that's how it should be. But um, So yeah, I'm going to get on and do this little bit of work now, and then, uh, and then I'll be back. Hey guys, I've had to uh, bring you in close here to show you what I've been up to because none of this is glued in place yet. Um, this is the rudder pedal stop. This is, um, it, it gives you it in the kit but it's very very simplified and the front end is squared off. It should be angled back like I've angled it back there. And they just it's just as two like lumps of plastic but it, it's actually like little bobbins on there so I've, you can see I've done that. Uh, the control column I've decided to stick with it rather than remake it because of all the details on the front of it I don't want to have to redo all that so I've decided to stick with it I've narrowed it down slightly um, I've also had to fill in the back because in the kit it's just all hollow um, so you need to fill in the back I need to add some rivets to that I've made the the front um, piece there I don't know if you can see it there um, that's the front uh, stop for the uh, control column and then the rear stop if I can turn this around without everything falling over you can see the rear stop there I've moved forward so um, forward from how it would have been on the on the kit part um, so yeah that's that's basically that um, now what I've got to do is add some rivets to the back of the control column and to the floor panel um, and I'll do it on the floor of the cockpit as well and then when it's had a dry brush it'll pick up on them and look really good so I'll show you now how I'm going to do that Right, so to do the rivets, I'm going to use these. These are the HGW free lines, and they're basically you can get 30 second, 48 scale, and they're basically just um, in a reflective packet. They're basically just um, rivets um, on a on a backing paper, and they work very much like the ones you saw me do the um, the review on the uh, the stencils for the mosquito. And basically they've got a paper on the front, a film on the front, you, you actually put them down and you, you just um, 
leave them for a couple of hours and then you peel the foil off the front and you end up with just the rivet on the background. They also do this larger sheet here which I've got, I've had these for years um, and they, uh, they they basically here you've got a, an average um, 0.25 millimeter diameter and a spacing of 1.56 millimeters um, so and you can see we've got here the the standard sort of just the uh, you know the all the way across here we've got the the, the the spacing like so and then when you go I don't know why I'm getting flicker I, I haven't even got the LED light on um, and then you get the the double rows here and the, and the double rows in the different patterns there which is which is pretty cool so I'll get the well, I've got to put some primer on first and I'll get these on and uh, and then I'll come back and see what we Here's think. my rivets and as I showed you just now I've got these two sets I've got the the great big A4 size set here and I've got this this set here the difference is they've got um, different spacing if you actually look at the the rivets themselves there's different spacing between the larger sheet and the and the smaller sheet but as it happens I want a four mil spacing on here and the spacing is perfect for the back of the control column as well so I'm going to use these and my plan is to cut out a piece the size of the floor and then trim it so I can put it on as one decal rather than try and do separate lines so I'll get that done now and I'll come straight back okay so as suggested by um, HGW on their website if you go if you look on YouTube they've got videos up about how to use their products and um, if you look for HGW rivets it'll, uh, it'll show you how to use them um, they do some wonderful sets for like complete aircraft kits so you get a complete set of rivets for the fuselage wings and everything so have a look it's, uh, it's some quite interesting stuff on there um, so as as they suggested I've painted this with um, Mr. Surfacer heavily thinned and airbrushed on same here and then polished back you can see the sanding marks underneath where I've done some uh, remedial work to fill in the holes that were left so um, I'm going to start with the big piece so as suggested it says to soak it in water for 10 to 15 seconds so there we go give it a good soak like that and leave it on the side and they suggest using Mr Mark's setter or softer should I say uh, so I'm going to paint that all over here get this all nice and wet I don't understand why they say you must a surfacer and uh, you would expect them to say use a gloss varnish, wouldn't you? So I want to get that nice and wet and make sure I don't get the um, get it all drying out before I'm ready to put the decal on. And that's ready to go now. So I've just got to slide this into place without damaging anything. That's going down lovely, I think. Now I should be able to just nudge this. I haven't come prepared, have I? Let's get a brush. Should be able to nudge that around. And get it to just sit down around all the features just let it overhang on the ends a touch and make sure it's square so the rivet lines are actually running straight along the the floor um, this isn't 100% accurate I think there should be seven rows and I've got one two three four five six so yeah, it's not 100%, but if I'd use the other rivets, I think they were too far apart, so. When I say too far apart, I mean too far apart that way. So yeah, I just wanted to go for something. And the, the way this, well, the way I think this is gonna work. So that's that now, I'm just gonna get a cotton bud. just lay them down and the way I think this should work it should leave a um, 
it should leave a the rivets stay as like a tiny drop of paint if you like and then uh, when you actually paint over them and dry brush that's when you get them back so what I'll be doing here is painting this obviously cockpit green and then I'll um and then I'll dry brush it with some uh, very light grey tempted not I don't like dry brushing with silver it tends to be um way over the top and there we go that's that one on and now I've got to leave it for a suggested eight hours let me get the light a bit better for you guys I've got to leave it a suggested eight hours so that's that one on the other thing that's handy about this if you do make this floor it'll fit in there lovely this is the cut off floor you can uh, put it in there so you can handle it without holding the framework so um, so there we go guys there's our cockpit floor riveted so I've now got to try and get this bit done and I've also cut off two tiny pieces for the um, for the upper part and as I say I, I don't even know 100% how well this is going to show through in the end but uh, hey modeling is all about having fun apparently I think in my case it's more about belly aching about what's wrong with every kit I pick up going to slide that onto there and then I can position this so that the rivets fall you see the spacing of those rivets is perfect for this control column There we go, just get them to fall parallel down each edge. Take out the moisture. And there we go, you get the idea. So um, that's now got to be left for four to eight hours. So um, I'll see you later. Okay then guys, it's a moment of truth. Um, it's now about half past five. So these have been on here for eight and a half hours. So let's see what happens when we um, when we peel them away. So I'll just grab this corner. I'm peeling away there and we can see that pretty much all the way across. Yeah, now where I haven't pushed down, they haven't stuck down very well. So around this area around here, but that's okay. The main area I'm interested in is here. And we should be able to feel, yeah, there's definitely a um, a presence of rivets there, although it's not as, um, it's not as proud as I might have liked. So we'll have a look when it's, uh, when it's got some paint on it. And then you've got the, uh, the control column here. So there's these two little strips. Yeah, they haven't gone down well at all. They've gone down absolutely fine. So there we go. So we've got those rivets up the back there. You can see. If the camera will focus. And then we've got these rivets on the floor here. That you can see there. Obviously they haven't they haven't stuck down one in that corner. I couldn't get in there with the with the cotton buds to rub them down properly. So I'm guessing what that's why they didn't stick down. But um, you know, it looks 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 better, doesn't it? it? Looks better than just a flat sheet of plastic, if you can see it. <laughs> right, so let's um, I'm gonna quickly get a coat of paint on there, see what it looks like. Okay, I've just painted this um, this control column, and just wipe my finger of it, and you can see the rivets are there. I've just done this in the first paint I picked up. It's a XF27 green, I think. So the rivets are there but they're not that definite and they're also not very round 
So this is proper rivet counting, isn't it? So yeah, if I rub a finger over it, it sort of accentuates them. So I'm guessing a, a dry brush would accentuate them as well. So there you go. So let's see, I think they're probably less pronounced. I've also got some Archer's rivets, but I've never used them. I think they're a lot more pronounced than this and won't quite look right. So um, anyway, we'll see how we go. Okay, I just want to finish up this little segment by showing you basically what I've done pretty much with the cockpit. Um, you can see now I've added the the mat pockets here. I've slimmed them down a bit from how I made them before. And I've also added the manual release for the um, upkeep bomb. Um, and you can see in here, I've done the base of the control column now to simulate like the, the leather that it had. So let's take all this out, move the, you can see here as well, in case you didn't see my last video, I've got the hydraulic lines in the uh, fuselage here. And then we've got the um, unions there that will connect to some more pipes that come out of the back, that come out of here. Um, and as I say, here's the control column with the, the leather around the bottom and there's those rivets down the sides as well which are quite hard to see and you saw the um, the riveting on the uh, on the floor panel and there's those side pieces there and there's the pull down um, this is actually the center the the flange on the bottom is the center of a tank roller this is a piece of um, sprue I turned down in a drill and at the top is a piece of um, 1.3 millimeter rod, which have rounded the ends off, and that's glued down onto a flat piece, which simulates the, uh, the clips that it locked into. Um, these pockets are made of uh, ten thigh sheet, cut, folded, well not folded, cut, and then um, glued into place. Um, difficult to know how to do these because various photographs I've seen online and in references. They don't all seem to be the same. Uh, this panel here is just glued to the side of the um, of the framework. And if you saw me other videos, you'll see the framework. And then I also found a picture of a restoration and it had the rear panel, something like this. So there's obviously seat uh, cables and stuff that go through here. So I'll have to do some more research and find out what's going on there. Um, so that's basically that. So, there we go. Um, on the instrument panel, in case you haven't seen before, I've added the material to make the angled support. The kit has it coming straight up here, straight down. Um, let me just bring this camera back a bit. Yeah, it has it coming straight down like this, which is incorrect. It should be angled back. And the actual um, bits for the throttles and everything should be bulged out more than it is on the kit. So what I've done here, if you can see what I've done, I've got a radius piece of plastic in there, cut some slots into it and opened up the slots, opened up the slots to allow when the photo etch goes over the top from the air scale set, it will appear to be, um, you know, hollow in behind. And then rather than try and make sort of eight slots, I've just done four slots and then put a piece of plastic in to blank it there so you've got the blank part in the middle up between two of the uh, between the two panels you'll see when I do the air scale I'll probably do a how-to on that um, and that my friends is about that so uh, in case you didn't see my last video as well there's the wooden the wooden table with the wood effect on it um, and that is that the other parts in the cockpit they all need they got ejector pins all over that need to be filled as you can see there um yeah that's it um so thanks for watching and uh stay tuned i know this is a bit slow but i see like i said before i seem to be spending about 10 hours doing research and um and about half an hour actually working on the model it's it's uh it's quite difficult with so many different marks around um and of course, so many restorations, it's difficult to see what's what. So um, I'm also doing a another series now on the um, on the iconic hair dambuster set about how I'm going about fitting that and the mods I'm doing. Um, so yeah, but that's the uh, that's the cockpit. I think it looks a hell of a lot better than it did as it came out of the box. 
and obviously the little star wheel on the top isn't on I haven't glued that on yet um, but yeah you can see the pipe work there and the plumbing it's all on there so yeah I'm happy with it thanks for watching bye bye